Everyone loves to write code and create new things, but there's an equal part of this equation that involves revisiting the code that already exists and making improvements. In this video, I wanna to talk to you about refactoring and why it is such an important skill for any developer, no matter what your skill level, to have on your tool belt. So first of all, I want to define what refactoring is. Then I want to kind of get into why refactoring is necessary. And then third, I want to talk about some of the benefits that you'll get out of refactoring. So first of all, what do I even mean by refactoring? I'm sure most of my audience already knows very well what refactoring is, but if you're a beginner or maybe you just never heard the term before, it's always good to get a refresher. Um, so refactoring is the process of restructuring existing code without changing any of its functionality. And I'll give you an example here. So let's assume for a second that we have a service that's responsible for managing credit card transactions. Uh, and this service is on a MySQL database and we're realizing that this SQL database isn't gonna scale for our purposes anymore. Uh, we decide we need to migrate that to NoSQL. So the act of migrating the database itself without changing any of the functionality of the application, that's an example of refactoring. Now there's a million examples of refactoring, but in essence, all it is is really just changing the internals of your application without your external clients knowing about it. So we learned about what refactoring is, and now I wanna quickly touch on why I think refactoring is necessary. And I think it has to do with the nature of software. It's in the name. I mean, it's called software, right? And that's in contrast to hardware. Hardware is physical things. Software is things that uh, just code that exists on computers. And I think the reason refactoring is important is because software is meant to change. It's meant to evolve and last for long periods of time. And this is especially relevant if you're working for large organizations that typically have like a couple core services that are ingrained in how the system works. And over time, the more dependencies that are taken on this you know, service that may exist, the more difficult it gets to change how that service works, at least on the outside. So I guess the truth of the matter is, is that like it's often gonna be very difficult to just you know throw everything away and start from scratch. That almost never happens. Well, I shouldn't say it never happens. It, it usually happens a couple times in any organization at some point throughout it um, but it's it's usually a very serious choice you know it's a cost trade-off analysis of how much effort have we put into this thing how much effort would it cost to maintain it and improve it versus just starting from scratch uh, and usually what you'll find is starting from scratch is really the nuclear option so all we can really fall back on is just improving our existing systems and that's really why refactoring is necessary we need to maintain and keep the systems that we built healthy so that they're both extensible and easy to understand for any reader so that's a little bit about why I think refactoring is necessary now I just want to kind of share some personal experiences of why I think uh, refactoring is super important. Now I want to kind of latch on to that previous point, which was that often when you build systems, they tend to last for a long period of time. Uh, in my professional experience, I've seen some systems last for seven, eight, nine years. In fact, a lot of the world's banking infrastructure is still maintained on COBOL-based mainframe systems. So that just gives you an idea of how long systems can, can last out in the wild. This is especially relevant for like banking and military applications where change is usually a very costly exercise. Uh, but back into the point, uh, when we originally build our system, we have a certain set of specifications, we have a certain service level agreement in terms of how fast the system is meant to be, how much it's gonna scale over time. So the point that I wanna make here is that I think refactoring is a great opportunity to revisit past decisions and see if past assumptions are still holding true. So maybe this is in terms of scale, like I was mentioning, maybe this is in terms of latency, maybe it's in terms of understanding. It could be the fact that your application has grown and just gotten so complicated that some of the decisions or the patterns that you applied in the past are no longer working for you and it's just taking too long to add new features and make changes. Uh, so that's my kind of first experience here of why I think refactoring is important. It's to make these long-standing but much necessary architectural changes that allow you to maintain a healthy system. Now, the second important reason of why I think refactoring is important is something I like to call domain enrichment. 
Now, this is kind of a term that I just came up with in this context. But what I mean by it is that when you're on a team and you're maintaining an application, often in the beginning, it's very difficult to know what improvements that you need to make in that system. Uh, everything is very foreign to you. You haven't maintained it or used it for a long period of time. So it's very difficult for you to tell as a developer, like what are the pain points of this system? It's only after kind of being in the trenches of owning that service for a period of time, experiencing all of those pain points personally, do you really start to get a grasp on what improvements need to be made in the system? And when you kind of have these moments of, you know, this is how the system should work, like the way we're doing things is completely not working. And like, it's completely obvious to me now. This isn't something you can do by just looking at a system from the you know bird's eye view perspective or looking at it from face value. Again, this is something that you learn through an accumulation of time that you spend working with this system. So when you have these revelations that are like, oh, this is how the system should work, it'll make it so much easier for our customers to add new features. Or maybe it's a Steve Jobs kind of moment where you're giving your customers something that they don't even know they want yet but you learn things and I'm calling like, this is what domain enrichment means to me. It's the act of accumulating all this knowledge and learning things about systems over time and using that as an opportunity to change the way your system works. Now, this is a little bit of a gray area in terms of where refactoring starts and re-architecture begins because it's not always a concrete line. Like sometimes in the refactoring process, you do kind of have to slightly modify your, your interface. But if your internal system is working the same way by just exposing something through the interface, then really is that refactoring or re-architecturing? I don't know. Let me know down in the comments if you think it's refactoring or re-architecture. I'm not even sure here. So in summary, you learn a bunch of stuff while owning a system over time. And that's how you figure out how to improve it, right? Makes sense. Now, the next one is kind of like a duh moment, but I wanted to share it anyways, just for completion's sake. So it's to improve clarity in your code. A lot of time when we're writing code, especially if we're under strict deadlines, we take shortcuts. And sometimes that's natural. And sometimes, you know, you, you add a to do, or maybe you don't because I don't like to do's, but maybe you add a to do and you want to revisit that later. And this could be anything, you know, it could be something as simple as using a global variable when you shouldn't be or you know not breaking something apart into separate classes and doing things the OOP or object oriented programming way everyone takes shortcuts under certain circumstances and I, I like to think most people have good intentions um, but it's important to allocate time to revisit some of these past decisions because if you just let them accumulate over time you'll just kind of have a series of these problems and not have your system be in any manageable state so that's another big important point it's refactoring to improve clarity in your code so if you like this video I have another great one on what is technical debt. I'll put that on the side here. And again, if you enjoyed this, please don't forget to like and subscribe so that you don't miss out on my next video. Thanks so much. And I'll see you next time.